Sutra, a Mahayana text. Translated for the first time from the original Sanskrit by Daisets Taitaro Suzuki. Original edition published in London in 1932. You may want to turn off the sound which is for training translators. They should disclose the way of disciplining themselves in the manifestations of mind itself. 13. Then at that time the Blessed One recited these verses. 125. The world as we see it exists not. Pluralities of things rise from the mind being see. Externally. Body. Property. And abode are manifested to us as of the Alayavinana. 126. The leaders talk about the Chita, Manas, Mano Vijnana, the Triple Svabhava, the Five Dharmas, the Twofold Egolessness, and Purification. 127. Long and short, etc. Exist mutually bound up. When existence is asserted, there is non-existence, and where non-existence is asserted, there is existence. 128. Analyzed down to atoms, there is indeed no form to be discriminated as such. What can be established is the truth of mind only, which is not believed by those who cherish erroneous views. 129. This does not belong to the realm of the theoreticians nor to that of the sravaka. The Buddhas disclose the way of self-realization. 14. At that time again, Mahamati the Bodhisattva Mahasattva made a request of the Blessed One regarding the purification of the outflow which comes from recognizing an objective world which is of mind itself. Saying, How, O Blessed One, is the outflow purified that takes place from recognizing an external world which is of mind itself? Is the purification instantaneous or gradual? Replied the Blessed One. The outflow that takes place from recognizing an external world which is of mind itself is gradually purified and not instantaneously. Mahamati. It is like the amra fruit which ripens gradually and not instantaneously. In the same way, Mahamati, the purification of beings one is gradual and not instantaneous. Mahamati. It is like the potter making pots which is done gradually and not instantaneously. In the same way, Mahamati, the purification of beings by the Tathagata is gradual and not instantaneous. Mahamati, it is like grass, shrubs, herbs, and trees, that grow up gradually from the earth and not instantaneously. In the same way, Mahamati, the purification by the Tathagata of beings is gradual and not instantaneous. Notes. One abbreviated from, the outflowing that takes place in beings when they recognize an external world as real which is of mind itself. End notes. Mahamati, it is like the mastery of comedy, dancing, singing, music, lute playing, writing, and other arts, which is gained gradually and not instantaneously. In the same way, Mahamati, the purification by the Tathagata of all beings is gradual and not instantaneous. Mahamati, it is like a mirror indiscriminately and instantaneously reflecting in it forms and images. In the same way, Mahamati, the purification by the Tathagata of all beings is instantaneous, who makes them free from discrimination and leads them to the state of imagelessness. Mahamati, it is like the sun or the moon revealing all forms instantaneously by illuminating them with its light. In the same way, Mahamati, the Tathagata, by making all beings discard the habit energy which issues from the erroneous views they entertain in regard to an external world which is of the mind, instantaneously reveals to all beings the realm of unthinkable knowledge which belongs to Buddhahood. It is like the Alayavijnana making instantaneously a world of body, property, and abode, which is what is seen of mind itself. In the same way, Mahamati, the Nishayanda Buddha, instantaneously maturing the mentality of beings, 
places them in the palatial abode of the Akanishtha mansion where they will become practices of various spiritual exercises. Mahamati. It is like the Dharmata Buddha shining forth instantaneously with the rays that issue from the Nishayanda Nirmana, Buddha. In the same way, Mahamati, the noble truth of self-realization instantaneously shines out when the false dualistic views of existence and non-existence are discarded. 15. And yet again. Mahamati. What the Dharmata Nishayanda Buddha that is. The Buddha that flows out of the Absolute Dharma teaches is that all things are comprehensible under the aspects of individuality and generality. For they are bound up with causes and conditions of habit energy which is accumulated by not recognizing an external world as of mind itself. That by reason of clinging to these false imaginations there is multitudinousness of unrealities, which resemble the various scenes and persons created magically and imagined as really in existence. Further again, Mahamati, false imaginations arise from clinging to the notion of relativity. To illustrate, when the magician depending upon grass, wood, shrubs, and creepers, exercises his art, all beings and forms take shape, magically created persons are produced, which appear endowed with individuality and material body, and they are variously and fancifully discriminated. While they are thus manifesting themselves, Mahamati, there is no substantiality in them. Likewise, Mahamati, based on the notion of relativity the false imagination recognizes a variety of appearances which are distinguished by a discriminating mind. And as their individual appearances are imagined and adhered to, there is habit energy, and, Mahamati, so long as the fancying goes on we have here all that is needed to constitute the self-nature of the false imagination. Mahamati. This is the discourse of the Nishayanda Buddha. Again, Mahamati, it is the doing of the Dharmata Buddha to establish the exalted state of self-realization which transcends the phenomena of the empirical mind. Again, Mahamati, what the Nirmita Nirmana Buddha or Buddha of Transformation establishes concerns such matters as charity, morality, meditation, tranquilization, various forms of transcendental knowledge and of understanding, the skandhas, dihatis, and ayatanas, emancipation, the vijnanas, and the ways in which they function, the forms which they take, their distinctions and their performances. The Buddha discloses against the philosophical views that which surpasses forms. Again Mahamati. The Dharmata Buddha is unconditioned. Free from conditions has nothing to do with all doings, senses, and measurements, and does not belong to the world of the ignorant, sravakas, prataika buddhas, and philosophers, who are always clinging to the notion of an ego. For this reason, Mahamati, you should discipline yourself in the excellent and exalted way leading to self-realization. You should keep yourself away from the views that recognize the reality of an external world apart from the mind itself. 16. Further again. Mahamati. In the life of the Sravaka vehicle. There are two aspects to be distinguished, namely, the excellent and exalted state of self-realization, and the attachment to the notion of self-nature arising from discrimination. What is the excellent, exalted state of self-realization belonging to the sravakas? This is a state of mental concentration which is attained when one realizes states of emptiness, egolessness, suffering, and impermanence, and the truth that is free from passions and is ever serene. When one annihilates notions belonging to the externality of things, such as the skandhas, dihatis, ayatanas, individuality and generality and when one has an insight into reality as it is. Entering upon this state of mental concentration the sravakas will attain the blissful abode of exalted self-realization in which there is the emancipation belonging to a dhyana. The path and fruit of a samadhi, and the deliverance of a samapati, but in which there is as yet no discarding of habit energy and no escape from the imperceivable transformation of death. 
This Mahamati is the Sravaka's exalted state of self-realization. Having attained this exalted and blissful condition of self-realization as realized by the Sravakas. Mahamati, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva may not enjoy by himself the bliss of cessation, the bliss of Samapati, but should think compassionately of other beings and keep ever fresh his original vows. Mahamati. In whatever exalted and blissful state of self-realization the Bodhisattva may find himself. He should never exert himself in the exalted and blissful state of self-realization as attained by the Sravakas. Mahamati, what is meant by the attachment to the notion of self-nature arising from discrimination? This attachment takes place when a man, seeing that the elements and the qualities such as blue, yellow, warmth, humidity, motility, and rigidity, have never been created by a creator, yet clings to the notions of individuality and generality in accordance with the measures laid down in books of logic. Mahamati, the Bodhisattva, knowing what this is, must abandon it. Conforming himself to the egolessness of things and holding back the wrong views regarding the egolessness of a person. The Bodhisattva should keep himself on the continuously ascending journey along the stages. This is the Sravaka's attachment to the notion of self-nature arising from the discrimination of existence. 17. At that time Mahamati the Bodhisattva Mahasattva said this to the Blessed One. According to the Blessed One's teaching, the eternal unthinkable is the exalted condition of self-realization and also of highest reality. Now, do not the philosophers also talk about the creative agent being the eternal unthinkable? The Blessed One replied. No. Mahamati, the eternal unthinkable considered by the philosophers to be characteristic of their creator is untenable. Why? Because, Mahamati, the eternal unthinkable as held by the philosophers is not in conformity with the idea of a cause itself. When, Mahamati, this eternal unthinkable is not in conformity with the idea of a cause itself how can this be proved tenable? Again, Mahamati, if what is claimed to be the eternal unthinkable is in conformity with the idea of a cause which is eternal in itself, it can be eternal. But since the idea of a creator is based upon that of a further cause, it cannot be the eternal unthinkable. But, Mahamati, my highest reality is the eternal unthinkable since it conforms to the idea of a cause and is beyond existence and non-existence. Because it is the exalted state of self-realization it has its own character. Because it is the cause of the highest reality it has its causation. Because it has nothing to do with existence and non-existence it is no doer. Because it is to be classed under the same head as space, nirvana, and cessation it is eternal. Therefore, Mahamati, it is not the same as the eternal unthinkable of the philosophers. The eternal unthinkable of the Tathagatas is thatness realized by noble wisdom within themselves. For this reason, Mahamati, let the Bodhisattva Mahasattva discipline himself in order to attain by means of noble wisdom the truth of self-realization which is the eternal unthinkable. Again, further, Mahamati, the eternal unthinkable of the philosophers is not characterized with eternality because it has a cause which is not eternal. What they regard as eternal is not eternal as it is not characterized with the power that can create itself. If again, Mahamati, the philosophers prove the eternality of their eternal unthinkable in contradistinction to the becoming and therefore the non-eternality of things created, Mahamati, by the same reasoning. I can prove that their eternality has no reason to be known as such just because things created are non-eternal owing to their becoming. If again, Mahamati, the eternal unthinkable of the philosophers is in conformity with the idea of a cause, what they regard as characteristic of a cause is a non-entity like the horns of a hare. And, Mahamati, their eternal unthinkable is no more than a verbal discrimination, in which, Mahamati, the philosopher's fault consists. 
Why? Because, Mahamati, mere verbal discriminations are, indeed, the hare's horns, on account of their having no characteristic of a self-cause. Mahamati. Moreover, my eternal unthinkable is really eternal because it finds its cause in the exalted state of self-realization, and because it has nothing to do with a creator, with being and non-being. Its eternality is not derived from the reasoning which is based upon the external notion of being and non-being, of eternity and non-eternity. If the eternal unthinkable is eternal in consideration of the non-existence and eternality of external things. We can say of this kind of the eternal unthinkable that the philosophers do not know what is meant by characteristically self-caused. As they are outside the state of self-realization attainable by noble wisdom, Mahamati, their discourse is not to the point. 18. Further. Mahamati. Those who, afraid of sufferings arising from the discrimination of birth and death, seek for nirvana, do not know that birth and death and nirvana are not to be separated the one from the other. And, seeing that all things subject to discrimination have no reality, imagine that nirvana consists in the future annihilation of the senses and their fields. They are not aware, Mahamati, of the fact that nirvana is the alayavinana where a revulsion takes place by self-realization. Therefore, Mahamati, those who are stupid talk of the trinity of vehicles and not of the state of mind only where there are no images. Therefore, Mahamati, those who do not understand the teachings of the Tathagatas of the past, present, and future, concerning the external world, which is of mind itself, cling to the notion that there is a world outside what is seen of the mind and, Mahamati, go on rolling themselves along the wheel of birth and death. 19. Further, Mahamati, according to the teaching of the Tathagatas of the past, present, and future, all things are unborn. Why? Because they have no reality, being manifestations of mind itself, and, Mahamati, as they are not born of being and non-being, they are unborn. Mahamati. All things are like the horns of the hare, horse, donkey, or camel, but the ignorant and simple-minded who are given up to their false and erroneous imaginations, discriminate things where they are not. Therefore, all things are unborn. That all things are in their self-nature unborn. Mahamati belongs to the realm of self-realization attained by noble wisdom, and does not belong essentially to the realm of dualistic discrimination cherished by the ignorant and simple-minded. The self-nature and the characteristic marks of body, property, and abode evolve when the alayavinana is conceived by the ignorant as grasping and grasped. And then they fall into a dualistic view of existence where they recognize its rise. Abiding, and disappearance, cherishing the idea that all things are born and subject to discrimination as to being and non-being. Therefore, Mahamati, you should discipline yourself therein I. E. In self-realization. 20. Again further, Mahamati, there are five groups of people, each of whom attains its own spiritual insight. What are the five? They are the group of people whose insight belongs to the Sravaka vehicle. The group of people whose insight belongs to the Pratyeka Buddha vehicle. The group of people whose insight belongs to the Tathagata vehicle. The group of indefinite character. And the group of people to whom no insight is possible. Mahamati. How does one know the group of people whose insight belongs to the Sravaka vehicle? There are people the hair of whose body will stand on end when they know and realize the nature of the skandhas, dihatis, ayatanas, and what is meant by generality and individuality. Their intellect will leap with joy on knowing and practicing what belongs to appearance and not on practicing what they know of the uninterrupted chain of causation. Such ones, Mahamati, are said to be of the group whose insight belongs to the Sravaka vehicle. Having had an insight into their own vehicle, they abide at the fifth or the sixth stage where they do away with the rising of the passions, but not with the habit energy. 
they have not yet passed beyond the inconceivable transformation death, and their lion roar is, my life is destroyed, my morality is established, etc. Single quote semicolon. They will then discipline themselves in the egolessness of persons and finally gain the knowledge of nirvana. Again, Mahamati, there are others who, believing in such things as ego, being, vital principle, nourisher, supreme spirit, or personal soul, will seek nirvana in them. Again, Mahamati, there are still others who, seeing that all things exist by depending upon causes, will recognize in this the way to nirvana. But, Mahamati, as they have no insight into the egolessness of things, there is no emancipation for them. This, Mahamati, is where those of the Sravaka vehicle and the philosophers make the mistake in their insight by regarding non-deliverance as deliverance. Therefore, Mahamati, you ought to discipline yourself in order to escape this wrong view. Now, Mahamati, they belong to the group of the Pratyeka Buddha vehicle who will shed tears and feel the hair of their body stand on end when the Pratyeka Buddha's insight is shown to them. When the teaching to keep themselves away from social relations and entanglements. Not to become attached to the external world and its manifold form. To perform miraculous powers by which they can divide their own body and appear double or perform the transformations, is disclosed to them, they are thereby entreated. Recognizing that they are of the group whose insight belong to the Pratyeka Buddha vehicle, their discourses will be in conformity with the insight of the Pratyeka Buddha vehicle. This, Mahamati, is the characteristic feature of the group of people whose insight belongs to the Pratyeka Buddha vehicle. Now, Mahamati, three aspects are distinguishable in the insight belonging to the group of the Tathagata vehicle. They are an insight whereby one sees into the self-nature of things, which is no self-nature. An exalted insight which is the attainment of self-realization. And an insight into the immensity of the external Buddha lands. When Mahamati these three aspects are disclosed one after another and also when the inconceivable realm of the Alayavinana is disclosed. Where body, property, and abode are seen to be the manifestation of mind itself, a man will not be frightened, nor terrified, nor show any sign of fear. Then such a one is to be known as of the group of people whose insight belongs to the Tathagata vehicle. This is, Mahamati, the characteristic feature of the insight of those who belong to the Tathagata vehicle. Again, Mahamati, when these three forms of insight are disclosed to a man, he may thereby be persuaded to discipline himself in them. This, Mahamati, is the stage of preparation for the establishment of his own group. In order that he may go up to the stage of imagelessness, there is this establishment. But the Sravaka who will purify his own habit energy of passions by attaining an inner perception into the alaya and by seeing into the egolessness of things, will settle himself in the bliss of the samadhi and finally will attain the body of Tathagata Hood. Point 1. 21. Then the Blessed One recited these verses. 130. The fruit of the stream entered, and that of the ones to come the fruit of the not to come and our hatship. All these are due to mental perturbation. 131. The triple vehicle, the one vehicle, and the no vehicle, of these I talk, for the sake of the dull-witted, and also for the wise, solitude-loving ones. 132. The gate of highest reality has nothing to do with the two forms of thought construction subject and object. Where the imageless stands, why should we establish the triple vehicles? 133. The dhyanas, the immeasurables, and the no-form samadhis, and the thought cessation. All these are not at all found in mind only. 22. Again, Mahamati, how is it that the Ikantika one never awaken the desire for emancipation? Notes. 1. What is stated about the group of indefinite character is not quite clear. 2. Those who are destitute of the Buddha nature. 
End notes.